All right, in this screencast, let's talk about the actual phases of mitosis. We talked about the cell cycle in general uh, and the different aspects involved in it. Um, let's talk about just simply cell division, the division of a somatic cell's nucleus. And after all, that is the goal of mitosis. The goal of mitosis uh, is to duplicate a somatic cell, is to make take one somatic cell and make it into two identical new somatic cells. And recall that somatic cells are indeed diploid, meaning that they have two versions of every single chromosome, one from the mother and one from the father, starting out with this original kind of generic looking cell with two chromosomes, going through DNA replication. Remember an interphase, interphase is not a part of mitosis, but in interphase, everything within the cell gets duplicated. The cell grows, it prepares for division. So we have the S phase, where the synthesis phase, where specifically DNA itself is duplicated. So we go from these unduplicated chromosomes, we duplicate them and make them, <clears throat> excuse me, duplicated chromosomes, and we go through mitosis. All right, we're eventually going to split these duplicated chromosomes into their respective sister chromatids and we end up with two daughter cells that look just like the parent. All right, so that's a, a little bit of an overview of mitosis. Just a review of interphase, we said that everything gets duplicated. How do we know if a cell is an interphase? Well, recall that the genetic material is all unpacked. It's uncoiled, it's tangled up, it's unorganized, and we call it chromatin. You can't see individual chromosomes. If you're looking at a slide, it's these cells with these undiscernible um, chromosomes. Can't see them, they are chromatin, kind of like the, the bowl of spaghetti analogy that we use in class. You can also see the nucleolus, all right? It's, it's visible, it's visible in all these cells um, that are in interphase. And why are all these cells, most of these cells in this slide in interphase? It's because interphase is about 90% of the cell cycle. So most of the cells that you see are going to be an interphase. They're not, notice these cells, you're starting to be able to see the chromosomes. You're starting to be able to discern individual chromosomal fibers, okay? It's because towards the end of interphase and into prophase, we have to organize those chromosomes. We have to coil them up. We have to pack them into uh, the duplicated chromosomes so they can then be divvied out to the daughter cells, okay? In this interphase cell, we have two centrosomes. Recall everything duplicates. And within each centrosome, we have a pair of centrioles. And those centrioles are going to spit out the spindle fibers, which are going to catch those duplicated chromosomes and, and move them where they need to go. The nuclear envelope is still intact in interphase, okay? So these spindle fibers that are emerging from the centrioles are not able to penetrate yet. That's going to be in the next, in the first step of, of mitosis. Here we go. Prophase. Looking under a microscope, you can see uh, individual chromosomes. They aren't in any particular arrangement. They aren't in the center. They aren't being pulled apart to either side. But they're, they are visible. Okay. Um, if we look over here to this artist's uh, rendition of, of what prophase might look like, we have a centrosome here with a pair of centrioles, another centrosome here with a pair of centrioles. We have spindle fibers, which are the microtubules, um, being released from each centrosome. We also have centrosomes migrating to opposite poles. This top cell is early prophase, okay? So you can see the centrosomes migrating to opposite poles, north pole, south pole. You can see the nuclear envelope starting to um, break down. All right, we talked about, um, perhaps we talked about how in different checkpoints in the cell cycle, there are enzymes that when they are active, like the cyclin-dependent kinases, they start to break down this nuclear envelope. And now these spindle fibers are going to be able to get in. They're going to be able to catch these duplicated chromosomes at the kinetic ores and move them to the center. Okay, we progress to later prophase. You can see the nuclear envelope is continuing to dissolve. You can see that the chromosomes, the duplicated chromosomes have coiled up tighter. They're more tightly packed. 
more organized, that process began an interphase. You can see that the centrosomes have reached opposite poles, and these kinetic core microtubules, the ones that are connected to the kinetic cores, are moving these um, duplicated chromosomes to the center of the cell, to this metaphase plate. The non-kinetic core spindle fibers, the ones that aren't connected to the kinetic cores, like this one, and this one, and this one, they're going to start uh, manipulating each other and interacting with each other and elongating the cell and kind of beginning the process of physically turning into two different cells. So there's a lot going on in prophase. Centrosomes migrating, spindle fibers releasing, um, breaking through this disintegrating uh, nuclear membrane, catching duplicated chromosomes at the kinetic cores and moving them to the middle. Once we get to the middle, we're in metaphase. Okay, so here we see centrosomes at opposite poles. We see that they have manipulated these duplicated chromosomes. The spindle is fully formed with, with the centrosomes, with the, the spindle fibers, uh, and they've moved these duplicated chromosomes to the center. Uh, looking at uh, a slide rendition of this, you can see here is metaphase, and I always use this, this representation, okay? You use your fingers like this. It, this kind of looks like metaphase. All right, you have these the duplicated chromosomes in the center, um, one uh, each made up of two sister chromatids, which are about to get separated. So we have this, we're about to have this. We're about to have these uh, sister chromatids work their way back towards each centrosome. All right, and I like to use the analogy in class of these centrosomes with the centrioles inside. Um, they're kind of like fishermen. Okay, we can think of them as starting to reel these guys in. Okay, they're going to start reeling in this, the um, sister chromatids. What really happens is that there are motor proteins in the centromere that start eating their way back. Okay, and they start working their way back. But either way, anaphase, spindle fibers, uh, which are attached, they're going to work their way back. The sister chromatids are going to work their way back to opposite poles. All right, and so in a cell, you actually see it in this fashion. You can see these sister chromatids moving in opposite directions toward the opposite centrosomes. Okay, and once they reach the opposite pole, we're in anaphase. This is in an onion cell, so it's a little bit different. Um, but in an animal cell, you start to see this cleavage furrow. You start to see um, the cytoplasm pinching inward. You start to see new nuclear membranes being formed. Uh, the genetic material, these sister, these chromatids, um, start to stretch back out, uncoil, uncondensed, become unorganized, and you're going to get two new daughter cells that are just like the first. Okay, just like the parent cell, and this cytokinesis is the actual pinching inward. It's a process apart from um, mitosis, but it's the actual pinching inward of these cells, the original, to make two new ones. These, this and this, daughter cells, identical to this first one. Okay, so that's uh, kind of an overview of, of mitosis and how it works in somatic cells.